Welcome back. This is Click Connect. I'm your host, Craig. It is our last show until after the seventh annual California Lodging Investment Conference. But before I bring out our first guest, I would like to thank our production partner, our good friends at Red Roof Franchising. Give Matt Hostetler a call. He would love to hear from you. You know, they've got a soft brand. They've got their extended stay brand. They've got a dual branded prototype and their world famous economy brands as well. Great alternative for you. Give Matt a call and let him know the producer Danny and I sent you. They'd love to hear from you. I have got one of our favorite and one of our best hotel owners and management companies returning today. Um, Joseph Fan has been an immensely great friend, a professional that I have dealt with for years. He is the founder, the president, the CEO of Brighton Management. He is also a founding sponsor of the California Lodging Investment Conference, and he has his finger on the pulse of the California hotel market. Joseph, welcome back to Click Connect. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks, Craig, for having me back and always look forward to your conference that's coming up. Oh, you guys are a big part of it. And thank you. Um, Joseph, California hospitality is unique. We know that. We've also got our share of issues. Um, What are you seeing 30,000 foot view of the California hotel market right now? I think, the, you know, I think last couple of years, we definitely have labor issue. Everybody's trying to find worker and that get getting a little bit better. But I think the biggest issue is banking, our lender, the interest rate. I get uh, to paint a picture, let's say a couple of years ago in 2019, our interest rate is three and a half to four percent. Today, we're looking at eight to nine percent and actually at fortunate to talk to uh, other another hotel owner and they are on the SBA loan so they're at I think 11 or 12 percent and it is very very difficult uh, since last year I think September the bank is continuing calling me because uh, all the hotel owner know there's a thing called DCR a debt service right. ratio let's say our mortgage payment before was four percent at hundred thousand dollar and now we're at eight percent. So now we're somewhere around two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Our DCR ratio is off. We we are not meeting that ratio. So the bank is calling the ownership to go to have reserve. And these yeah. reserves are big. We're not talking one hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. They want to see multi million dollar reserve in their bank, or the loan will be default because uh, the hotel's not meeting the DCR. Uh, this ratio. So that is kind of of a, a big issue for us. And I'm pretty sure with a lot of different ownership um, had multiple, multiple dinner. Um, I think I have more dinner with all my bank versus yeah. the last 10 years. They they do, they want to do a health check on me, make sure I'm still kicking and swimming, uh, <laughs> paddling. Uh, make sure our company, you know, when COVID hit, they, they show up, just make sure we're still here. Right, and, right. Yeah. And now they just want to check our pulse, uh, see how much reserve we have. And they nicely ask, hey, you know, to keep our loan continue, we like to see $4 million reserve in our bank. Is your money, but we will just hold it for you. And you yeah. know what that is. That basically oh, yeah. is their safety blanket if we do default. Yeah. Um, you know, I bank with a lot of Asian banks. You got, you know, East West. Uh, you got a lot of banking from from Asia, like from Taiwan, Land Bank of Taiwan, Bank of Taiwan, all those wholesale banks. Due to the Taiwan election uh, just happened, we have a new president, but the new administration don't kick in until June. So all these agency banks are on hold. They can't yeah. do any loan, any renewal until June. They, they're not telling you, but I know that's what's kind of what's going on. And so you got lenders not lending or not meeting the debt ratio um hotel might be doing good number uh good revenue number versus let's say 2019 20 or 21 but the interest rate basically double or triple and and 
become not, not a feasible uh, project anymore. I had a chance to talk to uh, uh, Atlas, uh, uh, Alan Ray's assistant, their VP, Wilson Wang. His transactional level for here, I got a little note in front of me. On 2022, we have roughly about 483 sales in California for uh, wow. well, 2022. Uh, so 2023, only 265. So that's like basically half, half of yeah. all the number of hotel transaction. And I noticed all the in 2023 or even now, the buyers in a 1031 exchange, they have to move the money. Otherwise, everybody's sitting tight. So it's it, it's a tough market right now because of, a, of the lending aspect of it. I agree with you. And, yeah, I, you know, I, I talked to Alan Ray quite a bit as well. And that that 50 to 60 percent ratio that we're off in sales in California, um, you know, it, it it I understand it because of interest rates. We've got generations where basically they're accustomed to the hotel or commercial real estate loans being almost at a par level of what residential loans were. But that DCR increase and and other liabilities with insurance and 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 pips coming and, and the banks wanting more and more um you know and and you know SBA at 11 I you know any, anytime we're in double digit interest rates it's painful for everybody. Um, you know, if we're at six, you know, six and a quarter, maybe, um, I think that creates a, a more robust market, but, you know, I keep hearing all these stories that you've got all this money sitting on the sidelines, all this fresh capital, you know, for people that were maybe in multifamily or, you know, uh, light industrial or, or something else that want to get into hospitality and I'm just not seeing that coming to fruition yet. I mean, we still see trophy assets trading, but you know that's far and few between. I mean, you manage for a lot of third-party owners um, that really don't have the experience to manage. What do you, what are you seeing from your novice owners or your first-time owner that maybe has one or two properties now? I mean, are they? Are you able to get them to understand all the nuances on the on the financing and the deal side and the operations? Are they are they are they are they just really behind the eight ball and not understanding that because it's so different from what they were doing? Well, a lot of uh, uh, some of my partner and uh, the new partner, they're going, "Oh my gosh, this doesn't pencil out," and they're having struggle and difficulty to to go. Okay, after I invest in a hotel and I have to put money back in. So that makes it, makes it not a very good income property. And uh, Craig, you know, we have a lot of apartment building. We have, we have roughly about a dozen apartment building within our portfolio. And the, the funny thing is rents are coming down, even though we have a lot of increase on all the expenses. Uh, insurance is a big problem in California too, you know, you know yeah. that. And the rent, we're thinking on the news is keep increasing, but uh, we have we have apartment in Beverly Hill, Westwood, Brownwood, La Jolla, and guess what? All the new unit that we're renting out, the price are coming down because people just can't afford it. Their their money is buying the grocery, the gas, the the whatever income they have, they cannot afford the rent of what we're charging, and that's going to affect everything. So so. Uh, hotel investment for a newbie, definitely they're on the sideline. For the seasoned investor, unless it's long term, they're going to sit tight and not do anything. And some of my uh, older investor, uh, some of my uncle as well, they're, they're slowly pulling back. They're saying, this doesn't work. Okay, Beside the interest rate, one, another issue we're facing is PIP, right? Yeah. Required by all the brands. So... I would say 10 years ago, we could do a PIP roughly about 10 to 15,000 a room. Right. Today, on the average, is 35 to 45,000 a room in California because yeah. we, we have all the all these new regulation and all the ADA compliance. 
Uh, today, I have a building cannot be open. It's, we've been good going at it. It's a mixed-use building for six months because of the CAS report. A lot of people don't know what that is. That is, no. that is the uh, ADA. Even though we all the, this is a brand new building, we have drew architect everything within uh, all the regulation. But after we finish, the city requests a CAS report. So sure enough, we did a CAS report. There's certain, of course, there's new rule and certain, certain, uh, certain stuff doesn't fit in the box. So we have to address that again. We are, we cannot open until we get oh. a sign off. Uh, City of Diamond Bar, City of Diamond Bar. You know, I own, yeah. I own the the Holiday Inn Diamond Man. Bar. Yeah. For ADA issue, we cannot get over that hump. We have to sign uh, the ownership between myself and my uncle. We have to sign a waiver. Any lawsuit that's brought on against hotel against the city, we fully indemnify the city. Otherwise, we have to fix the the, the ADA thing, and we, we did what we can. But there are certain things we cannot fix. Right. So, so that you know, Pip Pip is Pip is gonna be more and more difficult. All the old hotel is gonna be kind of not. You're you're not. How should I put it? You're you're you can't throw enough money to make sense like uh, oh right. you got your well we all talk about the gen one residence in right there's no yeah. way you could throw money we actually have us uh, uh, gen one we're talking to marriott and business is very good we run 85 percent in a super great market but uh, they want a new box so yeah. yeah so the only option basically what marriott was telling us is basically knock it down build a new one but it doesn't make sense for us to take yeah. a 30, $40 million existing building and knock it down and rebuild. So it, 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 that it's getting, you and I should retire. That's what we should do. Yeah. Well, I, you, yeah, some people will tell you I am semi-retired, but no, I hear you on that. And you know what? That's where, you know, Sinesta, um, you know, they had that Gen 1 residence in here in Orange yeah. County off the 405. And they repositioned it to their own flag. And, yeah. you know, there's a few others. And, you know, I, I mean, I talked to all the franchise people like you do. And that's the backbone of their business is reflagging some of these older assets. You're 15, 17 years old. You've got this massive pip that's coming in. And it may not make sense. And yeah, um, we, we kind of cal calculated uh, some of these larger pip, the payback, it's about 10 plus year for PIP. Yeah. So that means, you know, some of these older buildings, the license is 10 to 15 years. Yep. And it does it does it make sense? You know, you yeah. have to you have to sharpen your pencil quite a bit. And like you say, all these uh, secondary brands, the Nesta, I hope they just uh, had a chance to talk to them. I hope they get their traction and yeah. get their mass and get reservation and become a player because the the why i call the big boy the hilton ig and marriott uh what required to be in their portfolio is becoming more and more difficult yeah mm -hmm. yeah older it is building older building older buildings are becoming more and more more tough to to get them positioned right mm -hmm. what are the lenders saying to you as being an owner and a manager when you approach them about repositioning are are they having any qualms because they made their loan and it was a residence in, and now it could be, you know, uh, X, Y, Z. Are they having any uh, input on that? Oh yeah, huge, because uh, they're ultra conservative these yeah. days. And you're switching, actually here, we're doing uh, on this particular example, we're switching from, from a Marriott flag to IEG flag. You're still in a big, very big company. Then yeah. they will, they will, appraisal they're saying oh appraisal will be discounted the revenue will be discounted so the loan that was committed to the project now is reduced Ouch. and on top of it we have to have two-year reserve like the safety blanket for the for the lender make sure if it cover any shortfall when we can ramp this business up in the for, you know, first two years so for the bank i understand their point they wanted to yeah. make sure they're protected there's a lot of default um uh, a couple default in San Francisco, and not only you know we're talking about California, also other state. I, I hear from my lender there's default in Chicago, default in Arizona, there's default in other area as well. Yeah. 
So not only in California. California, it just makes it, I would say, everything's kind of expensive, right? Very, very yeah. expensive. So, so. Yeah. Very so much. I love so. the weather. I love the weather. I don't know why people move to Texas. I was at Austin. I was at Dallas. I'm not ragging on people in Texas, but, but good barbecue, though. But, but Great barbecue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I like Austin and I like Tyler, Texas, but yeah, I, I you know, Texas summers, no thank you. I'd rather have yeah. a nice breeze off the ocean, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, you know, no, I know you're on Bobo Island. Uh, I every time I come back to a Jowing Airport, I have a smile on my face, right? And fly just, right over <laughs> me, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's let's talk about insurance a little bit because that's also been a problem, you know. We've got our our, our fires and floods and earthquakes and everything else you can think of. And I know, you know, talking to, you know, some of our insurance carriers, they've had a five to 700% increase on some of their liabilities. And in some cases they've stopped writing insurance in California. What are you, what are you seeing out there? Uh, yes. Insurance is a huge problem with our Taiwan hotel motel association. We, a lot of discussion internally and sharing information insurance uh for a lot of people also at like state farm state farm covers some of the hotel they right. are pulling out and if you're uh your existing customer they might keep you on if you're a new customer they're not going to insure you period at, at all um, so how do you make sure you get yourself ahead of this insurance game you gotta have a good agent you gotta have continue communication and keep everything updated uh your sprinkler fire when you get all these reports also share with your agency so your your agent able to communicate with your underwriter what you're doing what type of improvement and here's the key don't wait until let's say your policy is up in december don't wait until november to address that issue let's do it three or four months ahead of time let let them know your these items are all fixed and what capital improvement you're putting it in and what measure you're taking to ensure your roof is not leaking uh fire protection all the brushes cut back your parking lot crack is sealed your plumbing all those things are going to help them to get get the insurance renewed but if you wait until december and say hey i want to renew my policy they say well we're we're not doing your your area you're kind of you're you're pretty much in trouble because you have 30 days to figure that out figure to turn that around i agree with you and i know you know when i was doing you know development it was minimum of of 90 but typically it was four months that i was sitting down talking to my insurance carriers and you know getting them out there to do an inspection let's see what's going on and and one of our founding sponsors at Click, uh, Gallagher Insurance, they've also got employee benefits. They've got a really nice bundled package that you know, takes care of that. And when I priced them up against somebody else, they they always came out with a better deal for me. I never, you know, had to go to another brand because they Gallagher's pricing was right. And yeah. they get involved, and you know, that's that's the other thing. You know, you've got to have not only the open lines of communication with the lenders, and that's why you've always had a stellar reputation. You got your finger on that pulse, but you've done that with the insurance carriers as well. You know that you've got to get all the mechanical surveyed. You've got to find out what's going on. What's the latest changes in the city and the state? And You know, how's Title 24 going to impact my renovation and, and go on from there? And there's a lot of moving parts that you know you've always been a master in having your team bring them together and i think that's you know one of the reasons why you know the brands you know, every every brand i talk to loves working with you okay you know they sure. it, you know they, they know that you know you've got your 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 finger on everything so yeah you know, that's that's uh you know one of, one of the the many things that i've learned from you over the years is you know you've got to have that peripheral vision and be able to see what's coming at you yeah, uh yeah you know yeah but, well, uh, the brand, you, you know it's not like some company we know there's just purely uh marriott brand um yeah. but 
California is very diverse market. And here's the funny thing. People don't think about this thing like NASCAR, right? NASCAR, what audience is that who watch NASCAR? California, Marriott, hands down, per, in Orange County, Marriott will, will outperform an IAG hotel. Um, yeah. They're going to get a better rate. But when you go to the Central Valley, let's say in Modesto, um, IAG actually numbers are equal or better than a, a limited service Marriott. So you, you scratch your head going, well, what's going on here? What's going exactly. on here? It's, it's that NASCAR mentality that, that fits. Well, Nordstrom would do great in North County, but Nordstrom would not survive in Bakersfield. Right. Right. So, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it is that brand loyalty. And, you know, that was one of the things that NASCAR was really, you know, known for. NFL jumped on that bandwagon with, with yeah. Marriott as well. And, you know, you look at some of the newer sports complexes, uh, you know, here at SoFi and, and Jerry's World in Dallas and some of the other big ones, they've got Marriott products there. Um, you know, if you go into um, Indianapolis and, you know, the, the Marriott products here, not only because of the, the Colts and having an occasional Super Bowl there, which they did build hotels for, it's also the home of the NCAA. And, you know, everything's exaggerated because all these athletes are huge in most cases. And, you know, they, they built it so that they've got everything there for the NCAA as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah. diversity is it. I think, you know, that, that's one of the, the keys is, is multiple brands, being able to work with multiple brands. You know, I, Joseph, forgive me because I, I don't remember, but I don't think you've ever done a boutique hotel, have you? Uh, no, but I did independent. I won't call boutique a uh, hotel there just because my whole company infrastructure is set up. We're so used to be branded, set up yeah. the PMS and user revenue management and, and the more of a cookie cutter. Maybe it's simpler to operate. It just my team are more used to that. We yeah. thought about doing a boutique hotel. I think if we ever buy a hotel in Santa Monica or Newport Beach, we, we might be tempted if it's yeah. on the stand, but just how my company, the staff is set up, they're just more com comfortable. I think I always tell people I'm kind of like the McDonald, not, not you know, McDonald. Or hotel. <laughs> well, I, you know, some of our friends at Pacifica being one of them, they've got about, I think, a half dozen hotels now that they've soft branded uh, with uh, with tapestry. Yeah, that's um, right. And, and, I, and, I, and I think that that's something coming. that's exciting. Yeah. Yes. I think that's you could good. you could do different thing. You uh, like our full service Marriott, um, Mr. Marriott tell us to be use yellow, blue, or whatever color. And of course, you if you're sour branded, you get to pick your own color on yeah. carpet. So that's uh, true. I, I get it. It's kind of like your home. Exactly. Now we've got a little bit more chaos coming our way because of the presidential elections. And um, you know, I also, I want your opinion on that, but I also want your opinion. We're getting back into travel season. Okay. Spring, yeah. summer, school will be letting out, you know, uh, June. Uh, what, what are you thinking the traveling public's going to be this year? Not only in California, but across the country. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be great somewhere in between? Um, you think we're going to have a lot of people leaving the country and going to Europe and Asia and various other places? And are we going to get our traveling back from Asia Pacific this year? Because I know San Francisco is still hurting. They don't have that. Yeah, no, back. San Francisco is a different topic. And we yeah. have quite a few hotel up there. It's, it's just, it's difficult. Um, all the number, uh, also having the multi brand, yeah, you get data from Maria Hilton IG and you get to digest these number uh trap our our traveling number for 2024 is up quite a bit um i think is somewhere around 12 14 percent over 2023 just from gathering all these uh da data but here's the thing is not that they measure by dollar amount so it's the middle upper and upper upper scale is spending the money especially your luxury your upper upper scale the thousand room, the ten thousand dollar room, customer will pay for it. So those are driving up 
on the leisure market. Leisure market is up, in, 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 and we're going to see that all throughout 2024. The biggest challenge is the corporate market. Corporate market, we're still up by 35 40%. People still working at home. Uh, we could gauge from Christmas party. We just came out of Christmas party. Typically, let's say my my hotel will have 20 to 30 Christmas party per from November to December before Christmas and COVID. We have one and now we have six to 10 before we have 30, 40. Now we have six to 10 still way off. Company needs to put money back in, get how should I get the uh, corporate training, get people back in the office, back in the hotel, traveling, that will save the corporate market. But our leisure market, no problem at all. I'm not sure what's going to happen in Europe and uh, in Asia, because like you say, the election is coming up. Um, certain destination is still going to be continue to be super busy. Uh, but due to all the instability of this world, uh, some people might be pulling back, uh, yeah. like Hawaii. I, I know you like Hawaii. I do too. Yeah. Hawaii will be like jam packed, and yeah. and I heard Phuket in Thailand is going to be jam packed as well. Bora Bora, all those destination, amazing uh, beaches, they are going to be packed. But for somebody to go visit, let's say South Korea or Taiwan, um, unless you have a relative there, I, I, I'm not, or even China, I'm not sure. Uh, that's on people's top top of the list. On that I, I agree with you and i think you know i think we're going to have an influx uh from australia again they've mm -hmm. you know they they've ended up being you know great tourists coming into the united states um and you know a lot of them have also decided to stay so you know they're working here and everything else and, and the australian government has said go forth <laughs> you know? yeah. so um yeah I, I i think yeah bora bora fiji you know and various other south pacific uh destinations are probably going to do pretty good um but I, expensive rooms are going to be expensive yeah, yeah. yeah and that's only part of it you start looking at airfare and everything else and mm -hmm. i think that might drive some more of the leisure travel back in uh at least the continental united states yeah so i don't know i i uh, uh fly on a certain weekday the the airline yeah. ticket is basically 40 percent off if yep. you fly back on sunday super expensive <laughs> yeah. yeah i fly, i fly back you know, on tuesday <laughs> exactly you know and it, and it's funny because okay you know living in orange county you know we're halfway between san diego international and lax now i can get down to san diego a lot quicker typically than i can to lax and i'll take that 7 a.m flight out of San Diego to Kahului, Maui. Um, I typically go down the night before, stay at one of the hotels, and it's 6 a.m. They're dropping me off at the airport as they're unlocking the doors. And I've gotten that upgrade to first class at a really reasonable price. And I'm sleeping for you know five and a half hours and I'm ready to go as soon as we as yeah. soon as we get off the plane. So <laughs> but yeah, it's that midweek travel. It's it's absolutely uh, a necessity for me. Yeah, my but, friend. One one last question before okay. we let you go, because we're almost out of time. Um, what do you what's what do you feel is going to be the next big trend in hospitality? Are they giving you any hints about that as you're doing your pips? Are you seeing a narrative thread, whether it's throughout IHG or Marriott or Hilton or Hyatt or any of them? What do, what are you seeing out there? What's going to happen? Um. There's not new thing popping in. Everything you know is all all free now, right? You got uh, executive club that, that like Mary has the uh, M club and so on. Uh, concierge floor, all those brand will push for all those. They want the loyalty. They yeah. want their platinum member to enjoy this and stay with them. That's for them. That's a brand. I mean, Marriott is the number one thing is intend to recommend. If you're if you're a hotel, the intent to recommend score is bad. They're gonna kick you off the uh their 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 hotel list there's no i i think it's cleanliness okay uh and yeah. check all the box and we know the wi-fi the exercise room those are all standard as so far i have not seen anything or uh 
there's few things on, I know Marriott did some field testing on kiosk check-in. Right, uh, right. I know different, and then you got your mobile key. Mobile keys continue, even though it's been now quite a few years, it's it's continued to be struggle because it's kind of hard to like one system uh, apply to all. But I think mobile check-in, you got mobile key, those are, they'll continue to, to do those type of thing. But one of the thing I know all the brand is striving for is it's about data. Uh, now that's what AI is going to come in later on right. data collection. For example, Craig, you check in. Um, I have all your information. I know where yep. you're going to be. As soon as you come in, this is what I know there's a little bit of heads time and I know that where they're going to go with this. As soon as your iPhone hits my Wi-Fi, hits oh, the yeah. hotel Wi-Fi. Yep. You pop up in our PMS system. We know exactly what you like to eat. We know exactly which room you like. And that's where they're going to. So it will be only a two question. Uh, here's your key here. And that's it. And off you go. Uh, so that's I think that's the future for the hotel. We know what you want from. And you could call the database or tell the front desk. For example, you wanted to be next to the uh, ice machine. You wanted to be next to be on the first floor, whatever that is. They keyed it in, and as soon as you walk in, that information is going to pop up on our screen, and, and we're going to get you those type of room, what you want. Absolutely, and I'll take it a step farther. They're going to have it right down to the brand of beer I want and the peanut M&Ms that I want in the room. Those are going to yeah. be there. Like, um, your, like your TV now, right? You check yeah. in, and they say, hi, Craig Solomon, all your Netflix, yep. and everything pops up. Yep, yep. Yeah. I, I agree with you, my friend. Mm -hmm. Joseph, how can somebody get a hold of you and your company to talk to you about managing their hotel? Uh, you definitely could call me. Uh, call You could web search Brighton Management. We're in Newport Beach, California. And uh, you definitely could ask for me. And you could also, if you can't get hold of me, you could also go through Craig's office and we'll, we'll definitely, you know, they'll forward that mess, message Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Joseph, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you and everything you've done for our industry. And thank you for being such a, a, a big part of the California Lodging Investment Conference and the Taiwanese Hotel Owners Association. I really appreciate you. Thank you. No, thank you. And uh, uh, super glad to be part of you. And we know each other for so long. It's always a plus. And each year, I, I know it's not just myself, the whole entire group of the California Lodging Operate or look forward to your conference. Oh, thank you, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, our audience, for joining us today. Okay, this is our last show till after the California Lodging Investment Conference. I want to thank Joseph Fan for being on today. He's one of our top industry leaders. Reach out to him. He can help you. Producer Danny knows. I want to invite you all to come to... 7th Annual California Lodging Investment Conference, March 6th and 7th at the West and South Coast Plaza Hotel. We do have a few seats left, so register as soon as possible, and we will see you there at cliconference.com is where you can go to register. I would also like to thank our production partner on this show, our good friends at Red Roof Franchising. Give Matt Hostetler a call. He'd love to hear from you. They've got a soft brand. They've got Extended stay. They got a dual branded prototype that's beautiful. And you know that they are world renowned for their economy brands. So give Matt a call. Let him know that producer Danny and I sent you. And we will see you a few weeks after the California Lodging Investment Conference. And until the next time, remember be kind, share your knowledge. Now go be amazing. Thank you for watching till the end of the show. If you'd like to be a guest on Click Connect or a production partner, please DM us on our YouTube channel at California Lodging Investment Conference. Thank you.